Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be giving you a tour of my luxury eyeshadow palette shelf. Now, this isn't my entire luxury eyeshadow palette collection. I keep my Tom Ford in a different place. I keep my Charlotte Tilbury in a different place and a few other brands as well. But this is what I was able to fit on this shelf. I love having easy access to it, being able to see it. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, here it is. My pride and joy. All of my luxury babies are on here. Well, not all, but you know what I mean. Let's actually start off at the top here and then we'll work our way into the palettes. So this shelf in particular is from Ikea, but it came with like a bed set. It's hard to explain. They don't sell it anymore is what I'm trying to get at. This is something like I recycled from my childhood bedroom into this room. But let's start off with up here. Right here, I keep a lot of my handmade jewelry pieces and some cute necklaces that are quick and easy to grab for. And then right here, I keep a lot of my Made by Sydney jewelry. I also have my Ana Luisa everyday hoops, just earrings that are super easy to grab for. I have a lot more jewelry than this, but these are just stuff if I'm feeling lazy that I'm more likely to grab for. Then as we get over towards the center here, honestly, this has accumulated lately. <laughs> I ran out of room in my foundation drawers, basically, so I've been putting my favorite foundations slash foundations that I am testing here. I've started keeping my new foundations in the boxes <laughs> for when I move. I think it'll just be easier that way. I also have this cute jewelry holder, which holds my wedding band, and a highlighter that I couldn't fit in my collection. Hand cream from Laura Mercier. Now, these acrylic boxes right here are from the container store. My parents got them for me. Underneath, I have additional layers of some Pat McGrath lip stuff. So I have some lip glosses here and then I have some pretty lipsticks here. So that's what I keep there. And then as we move over, like I said, I'm in a weird transition phase, but I have some lipstick boxes that I'm gonna put my lipsticks in soon. I have my Bose speaker, which I love. And this is a photo of my sweet little doggy Twiggy. She passed away a few years ago, but I love this photo of her. And come to think of it, above my luxury shelf, it's a little messy on the sides, don't pay attention to that. I keep these photos, which now I realize are crooked, but these are from Home Goods, and they were my background from my YouTube channel, if you remember that a few years ago. Like a couple, not a few. But anyways, yeah, those are from Home Goods. All right, guys, let's get into the goods now. Okay, so here's how I have each layer organized. So up here, I keep my Pat McGrath, and then over to the side, I have my Dior palettes. And then towards the middle row here, I keep all of my Natasha Denona on this side, and then I keep my Viseart over here. I mean, these are prime time eyeshadows, if you're familiar with my channel at all. And then towards the bottom, I have a few additional Vizzy Art palettes down here. And then I have just some more random brands of luxury eyeshadows that I love. So let's get into it. I'm going to start off by showing you all of my Pat McGrath palettes. I'm actually going to move us back. The first one that I have here is the Celestial Odyssey palette from the holiday season. Uh, this one isn't my favorite palette from Pat McGrath. Of course, I love it and it does have good quality, but it's not my favorite color story. Next one that I have is the Celestial Divinity palette. This is one of my favorite palettes from Pat McGrath. This is from their holiday season a couple years ago. And look at that, lots of purples. And the first four rows are from the Star Wars palettes that came out a few years ago, but I love this one. Change of plans, I am going this direction because the lighting is better. So you'll be able to see the palettes better. Okay, now, as you can see, these right here are all of my Big Mothership palettes. So these are not in any particular order. <laughs> They're just put where they are put. I actually just filmed my Pat McGrath Labs rankings video. So these are definitely random because I was totally too lazy to put these in any sort of order. But this one right here is the Bronze Seduction, a crowd favorite. 
for good reason. This is a great palette to start off with if you're thinking about Pat McGrath. Next up, we have the Divine Rose 2 palette. This one is limited edition packaging. This is one of my most used palettes from Pat McGrath. It's so funny because it's not my favorite color story, but I use it so much. Ooh, this one is always sold out and for good reason. This is the Subversive palette. So this one is always sold out because look how beautiful the color story is. It's definitely the best color story for Pat McGrath, if you ask me. Next up, we have Divine Rose 1. My box is all beat up for some reason, but I refuse to get rid of it. <laughs> it needs to match with my other palettes. This is, again, limited edition packaging. Isn't it incredible? And this one is probably the most neutral mothership that Pat has. So if you like neutral tones, this might be the direction that you want to go. This one is also extremely wearable, though. This is the Subliminal palette. This is the Mothership One, the OG. I love this because it is so cool toned, and it really was one of the first cool tone palettes that I ever owned. It's so beautiful. Next up, right here, we have Midnight Sun. And yes, this purple shade is as beautiful as it looks. These are very earthy tones right here. I don't use this one as much as I should, but it still is beautiful nonetheless. This is the newest mothership right here. This is Utopian Dream. I didn't think I would end up loving this one as much as I did. I use it a lot. And here is what it looks like. These colors right here towards the end are just everything. I am so obsessed with this one. I'm sorry if it looks a little washed out. I don't know why. This is the Decadence palette. I have the newer packaging, so you open it like a normal box, which I don't like. I don't really love this palette, but I just bought it mostly to complete my collection. The quality is phenomenal. It's just the color story that I don't drive with. And then the last 10 pan mothership that I have is the Sublime palette. This is not one of my favorites. I do enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but I don't love the color story here. Still, it was really fun. I actually used this just last month and I had a great time with it, but I'm not as inclined to reach for this one. So I have a few small palettes hiding back here just for space reasons. No other reason than that. But let me show you what is hiding back here. So first you'll see I have this Mothership palette right here. I believe this is Rose Decadence. So pretty. I don't really love this one though. I feel like the quality on this one isn't as good, but it's great for Valentine's Day. Also back here, I have the Celestial Divinity Quad in Fleur Fantasia. Uh, again, not in love with this one quite so much, just because I find the colors to be super duper sheer. Not saying you can't get a pretty look, but it's just not my favorite. And lastly, back here, we have Interstellar Icon. Love these quads so much. This one is quite unique as well. I actually used this a few months ago and I really, really liked it. This shade right here, prettiest purple to blue shift ever. Okay, let's start going down the row here. This is the Venus and Fleurs Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. This is a phenomenal quad. If you can still get your hands on it, highly recommend to. It's stunning. I wish she would come out with more Blitz Astral quads. They are the best. There are four Blitz Astral formulations in here. This one is Nocturnal Nirvana. It is so beautiful. This is actually one of my favorite palettes all the time from Pat McGrath. Here is another Blitz Astral quad. This is Ritualistic Rose. Again, it's just her amazing formula all in one quad, and this one is so pretty as well. Right here, we have the Divine Rose Luxe Quad in Eternal Eden. I don't use this one so much. This one, to me, is forgettable in her line. It's pretty, don't get me wrong, but I haven't really reached for it just because Pat has so many pinky colors. I have two from this year's holiday collection. So first, we have Bronze Borealis. Again, not one that I'm really inclined to reach for just because it's very dupable, but the quality is great. Then we have Deep Space Divinity. I like it better than Bronze Borealis, but again, not super inspired by this color story. Next here we have the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Risque Rose. This one is super duper pretty. This is one that I wish I would reach for more because it's gorgeous. This shade right here, Star of the Show. 
And then I have some older six pans right here. So you might remember some of these if you're a longtime Pat McGrath fan. This is a Mothership Subliminal Dark Star. I remember I got this because it came broken and they sent my mom a new one and then I got to keep this one. So I haven't reached for this one in a while. We also have Subversive La Vie and Rose. Oh, this is one that she totally needs to bring back. We haven't seen, well, I guess we have seen a color story like this, but this was the start of the roses for Pat McGrath. And then the last Pat McGrath palette in today's video is this one right here. This is the Metal Morphosis palette, and it just has a lot of these metal shades right here. This isn't one that I reached for a ton. So that was Pat McGrath. As you can see, I have acquired quite the collection of Dior. These, you'll see, are definitely just thrown in here. Uh, they fall over. They really don't stand on their own. So I just fit them how I can. It's not exactly organized, but let's take a look. So I have the Dior Backstage Palette in Plum Neutrals. This is surprisingly really good. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I actually really do like this. I'm going to let this hang out back here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the quints. I have a, quite a few. This one was limited edition, but it's stunning. Pink Sakura. I wish they would come back with this. Ugh, great formula. Actually, I'll organize these later because they're going to fall all over the place. <laughs> Let's see, the next one that we have here is Atelier Dore. So this is from the Holiday Collection. Isn't it gorgeous? It's nothing special, but it's about the luxury experience of it all. Ooh, this arguably might be one of my all-time favorite neutral palettes, period. This is Soft Cashmere. It is absolutely incredible. Highly recommend this if you're starting a Dior collection. Pink Vibration. This is from their... They have like a music collection. This is when I first started getting into Dior. How fun are these? They're not amazing quality, but I'm happy I have this because I just feel like this is an older collection and it's so pretty to look at. This one right here is Mirage. This is from summer 2021. I was not a big fan of this because all of the colors look all the same on the eye. Next one is Romantic Voyage right here. I didn't love this one as much as I thought I would. It is very, very pretty, but it's just not one that I reach for as often. Okay, this is another one from the holiday season. This is House of Dreams. I think this one is more my speed than the other one because it's a little bit cooler, but they're both pretty. This is Sprint from their Olympic collection that launched summer of 2020. Oh, this is one of my favorite Dior palettes. Totally underrated. I love the pink and orange combo. This is Early Bird right here. I didn't love this one. The quality is not so great on this one, but like I love these colors right here, but this color is terrible. Don't recommend it. This is the Cruise Look palette. I think this color story is kind of ugly. As you can see, I have very mixed emotion about Dior Quince, but it doesn't stop me from buying them because when they're good, they're good. And this one is Blue Beat. Again, one of the very first Dior quints that I purchased for myself. How fun is this? I should reach for this. This is quite different for Dior, I feel like. Here we have Nightbird. This one I like better than Early Bird, which I just mentioned. The tones are prettier. Again, it's not the greatest quality, but I do love the color story of this one. This is Triple Bloom Trio Bleak. So this is a trio. I don't recommend this. This is no longer sold anyways, which is good because the quality was terrible. Then here is Pure Petals, which also came out with that one that I just showed you, which is also just as bad. And both of them look the exact same. Okay, that's it for Dior on this shelf. I definitely have... Oh, see, these keep falling. I definitely have more Dior stuff in my collection. But these are just what happens to be on the shelf right now. It only has to look pretty in the front. And then I throw everything else in the back. And we covered the entire top shelf. Let's move down to the middle. Next, we have my Natasha section. So no particular order. And then I have these bigger guys that didn't fit in this way. And then I have a lot of my babies towards the back. Now this shelf, love my dad, but it was built wrong. <laughs> this is the wrong direction. It's actually not supposed to go in like this. It's supposed to be flipped, but that's okay. It still works, it's so functional. 
since these are kind of hard to get out, I'm actually gonna pull all these out and then I'll pop them back in as we go. Starting off with the bronze palette, I do really like this one, but you definitely have to like bronzy tones to enjoy this uh, because a lot of the looks that you get just kind of look the same. Natasha Denona Safari palette. This was limited edition, but it has some really great basic mattes here in Natasha's great formulation. Underrated, underappreciated, and underloved. The Trio Chrome palette from Natasha Denona. How beautiful. I will admit, multi-chromes in the center, they really aren't that good. But the mattes are so, so pretty and amazing quality. An oldie but a goodie. This is the Lila palette. Very great if you love the purpley tones. Zendo palette. This is my personal least favorite palette from Natasha Denona. I just don't like the color story and that's that. Sunrise palette is probably underappreciated from me. I just don't reach for these tones very often. It is quite pretty, but it's not my cup of tea. Natasha Denona Tropic Palette. This one is an old one. I love it though. This bottom row here wasn't very good, but the top row here had such pretty colors. Or has. I suppose, not had. And this is a favorite, definitely a crowd pleaser here. This is the Biba palette and it pretty much is the ultimate neutral palette. And for good reason, the quality is just incredible. <sighs> you snooze, you lose with the gold palette. Unfortunately, this is no longer available, but it absolutely is one of Natasha Denona's prettiest palettes. And you cannot deny that. You see that, right? That's so pretty. You guys know this is a favorite of mine. This is the Retro palette. I love purpley mauve tones, so this one is right up my alley. Another absolute favorite of mine is the Glam palette. This is the one that if somebody's like, what palette should I get? I, I selfishly just say the Glam because it's my favorite and it needs to be yours too. <laughs> but this is gorgeous. Metropolis, I'm waiting for her to come out with another palette that is this style because this really is the best value ever. Um, it's expensive but you get so many shades and it's a smaller pan size which actually made the price reduce. I don't love 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 the colors in here but the quality is so good that I still reach for it quite a lot. We have the love palette which honestly is not her best work but I use it all the time. It's one of those where the formula might not be the greatest but I adore the color story. Circo Loco, this one is a fun one. I had so much fun with this. I know it's not everybody's favorite, but the quality is super good here and the colors are really fun to play with. It's just an inspiring palette. And then lastly, I have my Glam Face Light Palette, which is so beautiful. The blush has dried out. If you watch my videos, you know that, but I can't deny how pretty these eyeshadows are. Okay, so over here, I have some small five pans and extra stuff. This is the Holiday Joya. So this came out like three, four years ago. And then she actually just recently relaunched these. This one is nice, but this one is even better. This is the Eris palette. My shade right here is fallen out so I have to keep it flat like this but this one is so beautiful it sold out so quickly and then let me show you what's towards the back Natasha has launched quite a lot of these little baby palettes they are phenomenal pricing so you don't break the bank all at once so let's see what we have mini glam this has great kind of more cooler neutrals Mini Star is not one that I've grabbed for a ton, but it is a gorgeous color story. Mini Biba is, I believe, her newest mini. No, it's not. Mini Crushes, but this also is pretty, pretty new. I like it, but I don't love it. Mini Sunset, I don't even think you can get this one anymore, which is a good thing because I don't like the quality on that one. And same goes for Mini Lila. This, again, was like... It was one of her first launches of these minis, and I just feel like the quality is not up to stuff. This is the Mini Love. This is amongst my favorite of the minis. It's just a beautiful purple color story. Of course, you have to like purples to like that one. This one is also a fun color story. This is the Mini Retro. Uh, I don't love the way that it looks against my skin tone, but it is such a pretty color story. It's mm, 
Yummy. Mini gold. This is a very, very trendy color story right now and for good reason. You can see how stunning it is. Mini xenon. I wonder if she's going to come out with a big xenon palette. This is definitely for a specific type of person. That specific type of person, honestly, is not me, but I do like it. Mini Metropolis. This one actually directly takes colors from the Metropolis palette, so I didn't need it. I just got it to review, but it is a good holiday color story. And then the last one that I have in terms of minis is the Mini Zendo palette. I wasn't a big fan of this one. Now here in this layer, I keep these bigger Natasha Denona palettes that were too long to fit on this shelf. So I have my big 28 purple blue palette. These are incredible. They're disgustingly expensive, but <laughs> they are the best quality eyeshadows I've ever used, period. Like just the best. And this one is the one that I would recommend more if you're interested in picking these up. This is the green brown, a little bit more trendy colors at the current moment, but again, best formula ever. And then this one, I've only used this once before. This is the eyeshadow palette 10. I bought this on super sale because she was definitely discontinuing this. Nobody talks about this palette, but I actually got a super amazing kind of smoky midnight eye. I loved it. So that's all in my Natasha Denona section. We hit the two major brands that were going to take up a lot of time. I actually have collected quite the Vizzy Art palette <laughs> collection over time. I didn't even realize I had this much, but it's this section and then this section down here. I love their palette so much. Uh, so let's get into it. I have a couple hiding in the back due to space. This one is such a fun one. This is the Pet it Pro in Shoo Shoo, and this is quite bright for Vizzy Art. I don't use it a ton because I'm not into hot pinks, but I actually bought this with me on vacation this summer, and I actually did create some fun looks with this. I do remember that. And then here's another Petite Pro in Apricotine. Gorgeous, gorgeous summer bronzy tones. And these are literally the cutest, tiniest palettes ever. <laughs> Great for travel. Let's see, here is another Petite Pro. This actually just recently came out for the holidays. You can see they've since upgraded their packaging. So this is, what are you called again? Etoile. And how pretty is this? If you love deep smoky eyes, this is a great one for you. There's a few more Petite Pros that I've collected. So this is the Solstice. So this is another kind of warm bronzy palette. And we have Soleil. This is probably my favorite one they've ever come out with. I just love how these are the colors of a sunrise and a sunset. And I've created some really exciting looks with this one. So this one definitely inspires me. And then this one right here is Midsummer. This is pretty if you like the soft kind of mauvey rosy tones. So these are super great for travel. I honestly only bring these to travel because they're so tiny and I just feel like you get so many colors. And then moving on, we have a new style here. These are the Edit palettes. This one is the best, Dark Edit. I wish they would come out with this one again. The quality on this one was phenomenal and this color story is so versatile. It's perfect for Halloween. Then we have the Spritz palette. It's a little bit on the warm side for me. It's good nonetheless, but it's not a color story I reach for a ton. Paris Edit is another one of my favorites. It looks exactly like the Retro palette. The colors are different. I've done side by sides, but this one is definitely one of my favorites from Busy Art. Then we have the Rosé Edit. So this is for those of you rosy tone lovers, but there's also a lot of neutrals here. I have another Edit palette brat lying around here. This is the Warm Edit. And this one runs quite warm, but not too warm if you ask me. And then I have, this came out, I wanna say about a year ago, they started coming out with this style, the Eton Dew. So Violette, oh my gosh. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite purple palettes. You can probably see why. I recommended this so much on my channel. So I'm not going to talk about it too much. Then we have the Love Letter palette. Honestly, this one is not my favorite from them. I feel like the quality on this one just wasn't that good. A lot of the shades were powdery. You can see this one is constantly breaking just by sitting on the shelf. It's just a really messy experience with this one. So not my favorite from them. This is a new one. It reminds me of the Paris edit. Oh, look at this. This is from their fall lunch. Highly recommend this one as well. <gasps> I'm obsessed with this color story. It's everything. 
And then last one on this shelf is the Bijouet. And this one is fun, 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 fun jewel tones here. This yarn in the last quarter really brought it. I love this palette so much. Okay, so let me get this back in order. All right, let's move down to the last row. And we'll start off by finishing up with the Viseart stuff. All right, so I have the OG 12 panners from Viseart here. Let me pull them all out. Look at all these babies. Can you tell I love Viseart? It's been so long since they've launched a palette of this style, but this is what put Viseart on the map. I love using these in my makeup kit. I have a couple in my makeup kit right now. They're the best, best quality, so pro friendly. Okay, these ones are definitely more consumer friendly, but I wanna add more to my collection, so I hope they come out with more. I'm actually gonna empty these since I'm reorganizing. All right, so let's shoot through these guys. So this is the Sultry Muse, and this is definitely one that I recommend to a lot of people. It's fabulous. Then we have Neutral Matte's Milieu, not a top recommendation, but really great warmer neutral shades. See how sleek they are? They just fit. Now this is older packaging. This is Bridal Satin right here. Really pretty satin colors. So you'll find a lot of these are the same finish. Not this one, because this is one that was built for me. I'm using different shades when Fizzy Art sold their shades individually. This is the particular one that put Vizier on the map. This is the neutral matte, and you can see why. It literally is every kind of matte that you would need. Then we have the warm mattes right here. Really gorgeous. I find a few of these are a little bit more neutral, so I do love this one. This is when I used to think that I was going to do more than just bridal, so I got this. This is the editorial bride. I didn't end up actually using this one a lot, but as a Vizier fan, I'm excited to have it. Cool matte. You know I love this one. This one is so great. And like I said, these are truly the best of the best quality-wise. I picked this up at a makeup show. This is the Downtown Eyeshadow Palette. They did a collaboration with Alcone. And I mean, I own these colors. These are colors that already exist within the line, but they really curated a gorgeous palette, didn't they? And then lastly, this is the Koi Palette. This has been discontinued but it was one of my favorites from Vizier. So so versatile. Those are all of my 12 panners but I still have other styles from Vizier. This is the Libertine palette. This is how Muse Beauty Pro found me. You guys know <laughs> I've had partnerships. I've worked with Muse Beauty Pro for years now. I reviewed this palette and this is how they found me from reviewing this. So this is special to me. Another one of the same style, uh, Liaison. I wish they would just come out with this palette again because the quality in here is incredible. This is one of the absolute best purple palettes ever, seriously. And then here is my very first Viseart palette. This is the Theory palette. This is where I was completely shocked at how good an eyeshadow formula could be. Best eyeshadow formula ever at the time that I had used this and that's what started this craziness. <laughs> So I have a lot of these little Pettit 4s, so let's work through them. This is the Pettit 4s Praline palette. So this one is kind of your everyday essential neutrals. These are really great and so tiny and cute. Then we have Frambois. This one is like the raspberry tones. Not my favorite, but really cute. Chocolat which I know a lot of you guys loved this one. This has like those warmer chocolatey colors. And then this one right here is Lila. And this one is super cool toned. So, you know, I love this one. I wish this one had more depth, but it's stunning. Then we have the four that they came out with this holiday season. So take a look at this. This is Bouillon. How stunning is this? They really knocked it out of the park with these holiday palettes. My goodness. Then we have Peridot and this one. Ah, this Christmas greens. I love it. Lappy. Got some icy shades. And then we have Garnet, which not my cup of tea, but very, very pretty. Oh, you thought we were done with Busy Art? We're not. <laughs> I have more right here that's making the other eyeshadows fall. So I've talked about this so much on my channel. This is the Viseart Grande Pro 1. 
essentially any matte shadow that you could need, you find it here. I use the heck out of this one. I also have volume two. I don't even think they sell this anymore. This is one that I have not gotten a ton of use out of, but yeah, you have like every shimmer imaginable that you could need, love it. And then check this one out, you guys. Volume three, baby. It's crazy. I love it. It's so good. Okay, guys, last section is down here. These are just some miscellaneous luxury palettes that fit on this shelf. So let's pull some of these out. I kind of started organizing these by brand, but then you'll see some of them are out of order. But I have my two Mark Jacob palettes, RIP. <laughs> we don't know what's up with them, but this one right here. <gasps> oh my goodness, I need to use this. That's stunning. We also have the Terrific palette from their Cherry collection. <gasps> These are just so slim and beautiful. What a shame you can't get them anymore. And then this right here is the newest Chanel palette that I've been playing with recently. I guess I put it back. Normally I keep them out for a little longer if they're newer, but this is the Mediterranean quad. I really love this. It's not going to be for everybody, but it gives such a soft, ethereal, sophisticated look to the eyelid. Then we have this trio right here from Chantecaille. This is the Safari Collection Eye Trio. Was not a fan of this, honestly. I just didn't like the quality. It kind of turned me off from Chantecaille eyeshadows, if I'm being honest. Oh, look at what we have here. I have my very overpriced Gucci palette, which is uh, not good. <laughs> it's just not, but it's so pretty. And by pretty, I mean the packaging, not the palette. I have this NARS quad right here in Taj Mahal. This is not my favorite. I feel like NARS can do a way better job than the quality of this quad. So not my favorite. I also have this one, which is one of my favorites from NARS. This is the Orgasm X quad. Super duper pretty. Love this. Very Pillow Talk-esque, but deeper. This is the Chanel Liss Beige's Tender Palette. I'm not as big of a fan of this one. I just thought it was extremely boring. Just a pink palette. Um, I have a couple Wayne Goss palettes here. So the first one is the Moonstone Palette. Unfortunately, this one did not work out for me, but the color story is stunning. Cannot deny that. And then we have the Imperial Topaz. Just kind of a classic neutral palette. Nothing too special, but really great start to the brand. I have a Chanel palette hiding back here. This is also from the Lace Beiges collection. This is the Intense palette. It's not that intense. <laughs> it's a khaki palette, but I like this one better than the other one that I showed you. I have a few more NARS palettes. So this is the Extreme Effects palette. This one I was unfortunately... Oh my gosh, this is hard to open. I was not so moved by this. I had to have it though that's the thing like I couldn't not own it but then I owned it and I was like why did I buy this it's so boring this is the euphoria palette I actually really like this it's kind of a forgettable palette but I had some fun with it uh, I haven't used it in a while but did like it Laura Mercier palette this is the fine art eyeshadow palette from their holiday collection very very pretty definitely underrated I actually make an effort quite often not often, but I do make efforts to use this as like lid toppers and stuff. It's great for that. This also came out from the holiday collection that year. This is the full canvas eye and cheek essentials. So here's the eyeshadows. They're literally the same as that mini palette that I just showed you. And then you pull out the mirror, which I hate this because you can stab the shadow super easily. But then you have some cheek products. And again, I actually make an effort to use these which is not something I do very often oh I have my Danessa Myricks palette here if you haven't seen this stay here this is the Lightwork volume 3 palette this is so fun it's just filled with so many multi chromes and duo chromes and just really dimensional shades that you don't find on the normal makeup market just in the indie makeup market so crazy these are they're so shifty it's definitely not even going to be able to be seen but if you missed it i'm sorry and you wanted it because it's so good okay guys last two palettes hiding out here they are both by scott barnes 
So we have the Lamazons Natural Zero Two Palette. This is pretty. I find some of the shades don't really show up on the eyelid as they look in the pans, but nonetheless, you cannot deny this isn't a gorgeous palette because it absolutely is. And I love cool tones, so yeah. And then we have the good old OG Snatural palette. And again, you cannot beat these tones. I honestly considered getting one for my bridal kit. I decided not to because I just didn't need it. But really, really great neutral tones here. All right, let's clean this up. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those were all of the eyeshadow palettes on my luxury eyeshadow shelf. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below some of your favorite palettes that I have that you also have. And if thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.